Welcome to the webinar, How to Start an Online Shop in the Netherlands, where we will talk about what is involved in starting an online shop. My name is Laureen and I'm your host today. And joining me is Netherlands Chamber of Commerce Business Advisor, Johan Lafra. Hi. Hi, good to have you. Ginfling.nl owner, Emma Hutchinson. Hi. Hi. And owner of CapsuleStudio.net, Sebastian Polizello. Hi. Hi. Thank you all for being here today. Um, before we start discussing the topic starting an online shop, let's take a look at a video on where to begin. Want to start an online shop? Discover what steps to take. Kim makes handbags from recycled fabrics as a hobby, but she's noticing that sales are going fast. She decides to start an online shop. Kim knows which products she wants to sell and to whom. She has also thought of a good domain name. She gets started. First, Kim registers her domain name. She chooses the legal structure, sole proprietorship and registers with the Netherlands Chamber of Commerce, KVK for short. KVK reports her registration to the Tax and Customs Administration. If the tax administration designates Kim as an entrepreneur for VAT purposes, she receives her turnover tax number and VAT identification number. Kim checks which taxes she has to pay and how she can manage her business records to meet the legal requirements on business.gov.nl. Kim builds her online shop. She checks with ACM, the Netherlands Authority for Consumers and Markets, which laws and regulations apply to online sales. She prepares general terms and conditions and ensures her website is properly secured against cybercrime. She gets started with marketing. She writes a social media plan and ensures her shop can easily be found on Google. She also applies for a quality mark, signaling to visitors that her online shop is reliable. Kim is ready to run her online business. Want to learn more? Find all you need to know on business.gov.nl. Government information for entrepreneurs. So, Johan, what can we learn from this video? Well, as you can see in the video, starting your own online shop seems fairly easy. It's easy to, to set up and start doing. Um, we made the video uh, to show that and uh, making sure that, that uh, people know that it's easy to start. But still, once you have your online shop, you will be considered an entrepreneur. And as an entrepreneur, there are, uh, I would say, a lot of things to juggle in order to get everything um, in the okay. Sounds good, sounds informative. And Emma, you're one of those entrepreneurs who started a business in the Netherlands with Ginfling. Let's have a look at what it is you do. Yeah, my name's Emma. Um, my company is Ginfling. Um, we're an online gin uh, retailer uh, here in the Netherlands, um, but we've just recently expanded to some other drinks as well. But gin is our passion. So we sell all the brands that everyone will know already, um, but our mission really was to bring different and exciting gins to the Netherlands, which is the home of gin or was the home of gin. So um, we now source from many different countries um, through sourcing partners. Um, and yeah, we, we try and bring something a little bit different. Um, we try and find limited editions. So just things that people can try and explore their gin journey. Uh, so we registered in July of 2019 and by the October we had the site up and running and our first transaction on the 2nd of October. I think for us we have more gins than most web shops in, in the Netherlands so we currently have over 650 different options of gin um, and for us we also like to provide a more of a personal service so every order that goes out will have a personal note and we will try our best to accommodate people for trying to find a gin that they, they really, really love. Um, it came from being made redundant. Um, so me and my business partner, Gary, um, decided that we wanted to stay in the Netherlands uh, as expats. And um, the idea came from a, an old viewing of a TV programme on a gin company in the UK. And we thought, why not? You don't always get to switch off, but the, the reward is there. So when you see great reviews from customers, when you see repeat customers coming, um, just when you're talking to people in the industry and they recognize you, it's a really good feeling. 
So challenges for us come from the alcohol. So um, we have different legislations and we have to get in touch with um, government departments and understand what the rules and regulations are and keep on top of them because they do change as well. So gin fling um, can have many faces. Um, so at the moment we are a web shop and we want to move into things like tasting and events. And also there's always the question whether there will be a shop or a bar somewhere down the line. My advice would be to uh, make a decision whether you want to run with it straight away um, or try and build up to it uh, on a second income. Well, that looked good. It looks great. 650 kinds of gin. That's a lot. Yeah. So what made you decide to start a shop online in the Netherlands? Um, following the redundancy, um, like we said, we wanted to stay in the Netherlands. Um, and we had always said we'd want to start a business together doing something. Um, it just so happened it became gin. Um, and yeah, it, it's now two and a half years down the line. And we're doing well. Going strong. Mm. So why in the Netherlands and what was it like? Well, um, the Netherlands, because we've both separately made our homes here. Um, but the connection with the gin is really because gin was born in the Netherlands. Um, we stole it in England for, for quite a few years. Um, and we wanted to bring some of the excitement that the UK now has with gin back to the Netherlands and also prove to people that gin is not just a summer drink. <laughs> Sounds good. But but what was it uh, like for starting your company over here? Um, very, very simple. Um, so in terms of all the registration, um, once we decided which um, or which Gamenta we were actually going to, to be dealing with, um, and we had the choice between Amsterdam and Almira, because that's where we both live. Um, and yeah, we, we went along to the local office. We registered the business very, very simply. Um, all the information was available in English, so that, that was perfect for us. Um, and yeah, um, it, it, it was almost too easy. Um, but the, our challenge and our difficulty is the alcohol side. And mm -hmm. because we have alcohol, there are some strict rules and regulations that we do have to abide by that other online shops won't need to. Okay, so you've done your research first? <laughs> we did as much research as, as, as we could. Um, I think there's things that surprised us after the event. So learning that the EU is not totally open um, for sending alcohol unless you have registrations in those countries, um, mainly to do with tax. Um, but everything else has been quite straightforward. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so, Johan, hearing this as a business advisor at uh, the Netherlands Chamber of Commerce, or KVK, as, uh, as we say it, uh, what, in your opinion, is the best preparation for starting an online business? It's just like uh, what Emma said. It's, it's, it's easy to, to start your business. The, the actual paperwork isn't the biggest, uh, the biggest deal. Um, but I always advise people to take some time for preparation right from the beginning. So it, it's an actual thinking process, which is going to take some time. You need to look at uh, what it is you'll be doing. You'll be looking at your unique selling point. You'll be trying to find where you fit in. I think that's important. And on top of that, you're going to look at the markets. You're going to look at competition. You want to make sure that there's enough room for you to, to be successful with the actual business. That's important. And for me, I'd, al I'd always tell people to look at the financial part as well. Mm -hmm. um, look at your uh, investments, maybe. Uh, it could be that you have an investment budget that you need to make in order to start a business. But you'll be also be looking at your own personal situation, how much money do you need to, to be able to, to live and, and do everything you want to do. And um, yeah, so by calculating your revenue for your business, uh, you can make some uh, decisions accordingly. And that's all going to be helpful in the preparation phase of your business. And yeah, write a business plan. I think that sums it up. Um, and, uh, again, not mandatory too, to do that. Um, a lot of people don't, but in my experience, by taking the time and writing it down, things will get clear and it will help you be successful. Yeah, paying yourself a salary is also very important. 
that I would say, yeah. a healthy business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah true, yeah. yeah, true. Good that you mention it. And I was wondering, for an online business, you have the whole technical aspect as well. Is there things to keep in mind when building a website, for instance? If you're going to go with the online shop, the website itself is going to be the most, well, uh, one of the, the most important things that you, you'll work with. So make sure that it's, it's 100% okay. Make sure it works. It has all the functionalities that you need. Um, Make sure you don't do just half a job. Make sure it works and um, you can outsource. Uh, you can build it yourself, but you can also outsource to, to, other, uh, to other companies, which yes, is gonna cost you money. But uh, if you have a working website, it will make things much more efficient and it's probably gonna save you time and therefore money as well. So yeah, yeah it's, it's important. So less hassle. Also. Less hassle, yeah. 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 Because I can imagine, uh, Emma, maybe for you, uh, did you build your website yourself? Because um, Jane is something else in, than websites, of course. <laughs> yeah, so um, we didn't build the initial um, setup of our website, but from the handover of that, we do everything. So we maintain all the lines, we change you know, any details that need to be changed. Um, we are actually on mark two of our website. So interesting that you said about, you know, investing and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So with some of our growth plans, our first host site wouldn't have allowed that. So we, we quickly moved on and, and now we're on our, our second, so. Would that be a quick tip from your part as well? So make sure that you get someone to build your website and then you can maintain it yourself. Um, that, that was easiest for us. Um, Gary's also quite technically minded, which mm -hmm. is good. He is the technical one out of the two of us. Um, so it's also good for him because he actually understands a lot of the functionality, um, but getting the, the bulk of the work done, but then concentrating on the detail yourself because no one's going to know the detail like you do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sebastian, I want to draw you in this conversation as well. But first, let's have a look at what you do with Capsule Studio. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. My name is Anna, and I'm the co-founder of Capsule Studio. I started the brand together with my husband two years ago. My name is Sebastian. I'm the second co-founder of Capsule Studio, an Amsterdam-based online uh, web shop for women's wear. We sell uh, suits. Uh, but also uh, casual clothes for, for women of all ages. Um, we sell these clothes online, but also in our showroom in Amsterdam and in different shops uh, around the world. Myself, I have more of an interest in, in numbers, in partnerships, and we used her passion for the industry to develop the brand. Our clothing is made to impress, is made to uh, make women feel confident and powerful. We are working with many talented people, with uh, freelancers, creators, also store owners, business owners. From the idea behind the product, to creating the product, delivering it to customers, selling, partnerships, you're responsible, but you also take part in the whole value creation. We carefully select the partner factories, suppliers that we work with. We make sure that the people who produce our clothing work in uh, decent conditions. They are fairly paid and fairly treated. So that's also a very important aspect of our brand. It was March 2020 when we received our first collection. And since then we have uh, produced uh, five collections already by now and there are more on the way. We're really strong in, in that mid-range where, where the clothes are still affordable, uh, but at the same time fashionable, durable and made in Europe. The best thing about having your own business is of course flexibility. Um, every day you can do different things and sometimes you can just wake up with an idea and start executing it from scratch. Ideas in the corporate world, sometimes it takes eight or ten people to say yes uh, before you can try something. But uh, when you run a business together with your partner, sometimes you just look over the shoulder and say, hey, can we try this? And then you just do something crazy together. And that's amazing. And that gives us great speed. Uh, we can innovate very quickly and we can also iterate quite quickly. Online shopping has become definitely an integral part of our day-to-day -day life, but at the same time, a lot of people are looking for a little bit of the offline experience with the personal touch. So for sure, I think in the future, it will be uh, a balance between the digital experience and uh, offline experience. My advice for, for someone starting out a, a web shop is, is to try fast and, and, and fail fast and try again and iterate. Uh, get in front of customers as soon as possible and then figure out the, the perfect website and, and the perfect pictures. So Sebastian, I heard you say uh, looking over the shoulder of your partner. So how do, how's the dynamic? How does it work starting a business with your partner? Yeah, great, uh, great question. And, and, and really Capsule Studio started as, as 
more than a business, it, it was a project, something to do together. Um, in, instead of going uh, skiing, uh, we started a, started a business together. Um, when we started Capsule Studio, we were, we were still dating, and, and, and today we're married, so I think uh, we did something right along the way. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's really great. I think, of course, there's, there's a downside to this too, which is that the business never sleeps. Mm. Uh, you're, you're really in it 24-7 when you, when you live and work with, uh, with the team. Um, so it, it makes it really intense, but that also means we're, we're going ahead really, really fast. So what was it like for you to start a business in the Netherlands as a non-Dutch person? I, I can really echo Emma's experience yeah. on over how easy it was. I think the whole process with the KVK was uh, really, really seamless, uh, quick. I, I think we paid 50 bucks for the registration. Um, and the service from the KVK has also been amazing. We're in, we're in touch with them uh, with WhatsApp even, asking questions about registration. Maybe we want to change the form of the company. They send us PDFs over WhatsApp. So it's, it's yeah, really, really easy and, and great service, actually. Yeah. I never gave the feedback to the KVK. But okay, well, thank, thank you. It's, it's noted, yeah. <laughs> That's what we're doing right now as we speak. So does, the same, um, does it also count for your partner? Positive experiences as well? Easy way to start up? So I think I answer from the from the business because uh, I'm more on the on the paperwork side, mm -hmm. while Anna is more on the creative side. So uh, if there are if there were any issues with the yeah, government or taxes, that would be more me uh, trying okay. to solve those. Nice. And Emma, how was it for Gary? More on the te technical aspect website you just mentioned. Yeah, I, I think um, you know that part is is understanding what you want and what you need, um, and how quickly it can be delivered. Um, but working with Gary is, um, you know, we've known each other probably now more than twenty years, so um, we know each other quite well. Mm -hmm. um, we know our strengths and weaknesses, and um, we, we complement each other really well for the business. And as a, as a non-Dutch speaker, or maybe a Dutch is perfect in the meantime, might be, who knows? <laughs> Any experiences on that? Yeah, I won't embarrass myself with my Dutch. Um, what we have found is even from, so from starting the business was, was really, really good. Everything was in English. Um, we do have customers call us. And what I would say to people is don't be scared that you don't speak Dutch. Um, Almost everyone that phones us speaks English um, in a very endearing way. Everyone will say, my English is not so good. Trust me, it's better than my Dutch. <laughs> um, and we've never had a situation where we couldn't resolve uh, a, a, a conversation or a request. Um, and we do that by obviously telephone. And if we receive an email in Dutch, then we'll use our friend Google Translate sometimes and uh, we, we'll resolve it that way. It works out. That yes. Way. Good, good, good. Um, so I was wondering, Sebastian, you have an online clothing shop, but yeah. there must be loads of competition. How do you stand out? There is a lot of competition, yes. Um, however, you need to remember that not every clothing company is a direct com competitor. Mm -hmm. um, we're really trying to find our niche in the, in the mid-range, uh, where we offer clothes that are of uh, high quality, made in Europe, um, and, and at the, what we think is a reasonable price. Um, so we really try to set us aside from uh, both the, the mass market, which is cheap and accessible, uh, but also we want to be yeah, cheaper and more accessible than the high fashion brands. So we're, we're trying to find our, our niche in the middle. And what we found is that we don't have much direct competition in, in that niche. It's a small one, but, um, but we're quite happy to be there. So your unique selling point would be? So our unique selling points are really centered around sustainability, mm -hmm. uh, ethical, local production, uh, and of course also uh, a sense of fashion. So when we compare our designs with, with those of, our, of some of the competitors we, we look at, uh, we think we are a bit ahead of the curve uh, in terms of designs. I think what helps is that we're still quite small, uh, while bigger brands need to plan uh, productions a year ahead or even a year and a half ahead, uh, we often make changes and redesigns up until a couple of weeks before uh, the actual production. So we're, we're quite fast uh, to adapt to, to changes in, in, in trends. Nice, sounds good. So I was wondering, is the, the sustainability part, is that coming from a, a moral or is that just going on with the trend that we have at the moment? So there's, there's a couple of aspects. So we, we see it as two different things. There's a sustainability aspect and there's an, an ethics in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the ethical part is really what we founded the business on. We decided we want to found a business with uh, local production. We want to be able to visit all the factories ourselves, see the working conditions. Uh, we know the salaries of the, of the people working in, in the factories that produce for us. Uh, and that's something really important for us. Then the, um, the sustainability aspect is something that grew with the business. Uh, we didn't start saying we want to make ethical and sustainable but we found that it really helps us define our niche to also uh, do as much sustainability as, as possible. So uh, our cotton is certified, it's uh, organic, it's sustainable, um, and, and we try to do everything we can to, to find good materials, uh, to reduce the time on the road, to, to reduce the, the CO2 effects of, of transport, um, while at the same time not forgetting yeah, the, the ethical part as well. Yeah. So the USPs are in there and Johan, you mentioned that they are very important. So Emma, what are the USPs of Chinfling? Mm. Um, I think for us, it's our broad range. Um, we, we are the destination for gin within the Netherlands. Um, the go to. Yeah, there, there's, um, there's other online sellers that, that have lots of gins, um, but we will definitely have some that they, they won't have. Um, we actually import to ourselves. So um, yes, we can resell them on. Um, and maybe we will. Um, but for us, um, it's not just about the products that we have. We understand that price is very important within the Netherlands. That's something that on a product which is branded is, is quite difficult to really set yourself. And you do need to really look at what the market is doing. Um, but we look at creative ways of, of having really good value without just having very low prices. Um, and for us as well, it's a very personal service that we like to offer. So um, every single order that goes out, myself or Gary will write a card and it is a genuine thank you for supporting our business. Um, sometimes we'll put a little tip on there. Um, you yeah. know, we see the repeat customers coming through, which is always really good. Um, but also we have the ability for people to come and collect from um, our premises. So it's always nice to have a conversation with a customer, um, see what they're mixing their drinks with nice. um, and also yeah. get recommendations for them of something they couldn't find. So it's a true personal touch for you even yeah. adding that personal card. Yeah definitely. Nice. <laughs> so um, Johan we mentioned a few a few trends personal touch is very important sustainability is on trend what are other trends that are going on in the market as we speak? Yeah I'd say it's 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 a, a few um, you can look at the re-commercing um, uh, that's it uh, Acting happening a lot now, and uh, also there's a voice commerce, which is which is the thing now. Um, that's a trend. Um, customers becoming more and more critical on what they're expecting from your web shop is something that is a trend uh, this uh, this day and age. And of course, it's also multi-channel. Uh, and I think if you look at those, those can be considered trends. Yeah, so the trends go both ways, even what's on, on trend for buying, but also how the customer is behaving in this aspect. And you mentioned uh, increasingly critical on, on delivery times. Uh, is that something you've in experienced? Am I maybe starting with you? Yeah, so we have a delivery promise. Um, now, our promise is that we will hand it to the carrier on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we can't have full responsibility of, of getting it to a customer's front door because we don't physically make that delivery. So we are reliant on a carrier. Um, so we will promise to do our part. And, um, you know, most of the time the carrier will do theirs. I think um, customers do like to receive things quickly. Um, they also want to receive them affordably. Um, and that for us is a challenge because our products are quite heavy. Our products have to be shipped in certain packages. Mm -hmm. um, and there's extra things that we need to pay for on a delivery service, such as age check verification. Yeah. So different rules and regulations for the shipping part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Johan also mentioned uh, multi-channel. Is that something you apply as well, Sebastian? Uh, yeah, of course. I think it's, it's really important to be wherever your, your customers are. Um, mm -hmm. We started as an online only shop and we thought online only would work for a fashion company. Um, what we quickly learned was that you need to have uh, a physical presence as well. Uh, so we decided to try 
partnering with different stores. So right now we have uh, stores in, in Amsterdam, Berlin, uh, we have a store in California, in Antwerp, uh, and that gives customers the opportunity to try on the clothes themselves before buying them. Um, we also have a, have a showroom, and of course we also sell not only on our website, but also through Instagram, through Facebook. Um, so we have all that integrated into our, into our web shop, which still is our, our primary channel. So really multiple channels then. In that Absolutely. Case. So, uh, Johan, just a final question. What would your advice be for someone starting an online shop? There has been a huge transition from everything online to offline to online. So you're not going to be the only one there. And please take some time to look at, as Sebastian said, a niche, which, which is good. Have something that you're specialized in, same goes for you with, with the gin. Uh, make sure you figure out um, what your specific place in the entire market is going to be so that clients know what they'll be coming for and what you can offer them. I think that's important. And also, maybe on a side note, um, also look at security issues. I think that's important too. Everything's done online. Everyone has their shop online. But cybercrime is really something to take into consideration this day and age. So if you have an online shop, make sure you read up on that as well and make sure that your website is secure. Well, thank you, Johan, Emma and Sebastian for being here, sharing your insights and knowledge with us. Uh, let's recap. The foundation for a successful online shop is a, a unique idea and product range, good preparation, stable, secure software. You also need to be able to respond to current trends and developments in the market, and you need to keep up with what is important to your customers. So find this and more on the website.